Hey everyone, we are back. Rip City Real Talk. Quick, quick episode this week. We don't have too much to go over for you guys. As you can see, Craig Moshka is here with me, Anthony Blaylock, your hosts. Uh, yeah, we don't have too much to go over this week. We're going to kind of save it for next week. Uh, we do have the preseason game that we're going to talk about, uh, some more rumors that came up, some other news, and of course, we'll dip our toes into some other some other unfortunate things with some ex-players that were happening this week. Uh, so with that, man, uh, preseason game one comes right down to it. Uh, mm-hmm. We lost 121 to, I believe, 107 yeah. to Golden State. We'll look close for a while. However, Curry kind of did Curry stuff there in the third, you know, second half of the game and put us away pretty quick. He did. Uh, and when did Poole get so good? I've heard, I've heard nothing but buzz out of their camp about this Jordan Poole and how much he's leveled up. And they don't need Clay. They can take their time bringing Clay back because of him. It's just he's setting the the NBA Twitter a buzz right now, and he sort of ripped us up too. Um, what did you see from the guys that you wanted to see as far as like playing time, as far as scheme? Was there anything that you had big takeaways from this one? Yeah. So first first thing I noticed, um, I'll talk about the bench and and mainly Anthony Simons playing twenty plus yes. minutes and Little playing twenty plus minutes. So we kind of wondered how they were going to fit. We knew Anthony was going to get a lot of playing time. Obviously, Anthony was going to get a lot of playing time, but Anthony came in, played, I think, 22 minutes, something like that. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing for me is he played point guard. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe they played Macklemore with him a majority of the backup minutes, and then obviously with Little, Nance, and Zeller. But he had six assists. And, you know, that – I mean, it's preseason, so I'm not going to hold it for too much here as far as its weight goes, but – I will say that six assists is pretty good to see out of him. That means he is distributing a little bit more than he was previously. Mm-hmm. So happy to see that. And then a little, you know, didn't do too much. It didn't affect the game in any hardcore kind of way. But to see him play 20 plus minutes, a small forward kind of tells you that he's definitely the backup plan in the wing position. Yeah, I think that that's actually going to be a thing for real. I think that Anthony Simons is going to be one of our leading minute guys off the bench. He looked really pretty good. I mean, you figure that him and little are going to bring what you need, what this team needs. I do think that little is probably going to have to play really well. I mean, his minutes are going to be, we're going to need him to play well, both defensively and he's going to have to bring something on the offensive end too. And I don't know if he's ready to make that contribution yet, but I'm hearing rumors about him all the time from coaches, from players. They're saying that Nasir little looks to be, to looks like he's leveled up this year. So we'll see if that holds. Yeah. I mean, he went, let's take a look here. He shot one and nine. You know, missed yeah, all three of his three point attempts, but he did have eight rebounds. And again, just having the size and athleticism out yeah. there is going to make a, a huge deal. And we've talked right. about it for a while that we haven't really had a lack of size off the bench. I mean, Hood's been out there. Mello's tall, couldn't really move, but he's been out there. He's been fine. Size was never really the issue, but I think the movement and the athleticism was always kind of the issue. So now that we have Little coming out there and We'll see. I mean, there's still some more games to be played. We, we wanted to get back to our Sunday schedule, so unfortunately we didn't get to – and probably won't get to cover the other preseason games. Yeah. It's going to kind of touch on this one, and we'll still tweet and, and do all that good stuff in yeah. regards to our opinions. But that's the number one thing I noticed. And then Larry Nance played 18 <laughs> played eighteen minutes, and and what, what do you think he did with it? Uh, I didn't check the stats, but it couldn't have been good because I didn't hear any very any good buzz out of it, so I bet he did nothing. So he, did, he went 0 for 1, which was a three-point attempt. He had two rebounds, and that was it. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to tell you, we, we, both, we both owned him in fantasy, and I'll tell you, the guy doesn't score. So if you're a Blazer fan and you're wondering what he does, it ain't scoring. He's going to be a defensive guy, and he's going to bring a lot of hustle and energy, and he's going to rebound kind of well as long as he can stay healthy. But I don't expect him to score, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, I didn't expect him to put up 20, did you? No, I mean, of course not. But I would like to see him get closer to 10, 10 points a game playing as an athletic big. Sure. But mainly rebounding and passing. Like, I know his defensive stats are going to be there. I know he's going to hit a couple threes because he can do it. Yeah. But I'd like to see more ball movement out of him. Okay. It's a little odd to not see at least one assist come through in 18 minutes. Same with the rebound. Like, yeah. I mean, that's kind of one of your jobs as a power forward is to at least go get some rebounds. Mm-hmm. I was a little concerned. I didn't see that defensive stats. Again, I'm not overly concerned about that's what he's going to continue to do. And it's kind of what he was brought in to do. But at the same time, I'd like to see him be involved a little more offensively. 
I know he's not going to be Draymond Green by any means, but I would like to see him get the ball and pass a bit more than I saw in game one. And we'll see how that works out. I did see a lot more ball movement, however, especially with CJ and especially with Dame. Now, their assist numbers were still really low. I think they got like two yeah. each. They didn't do anything assist numbers, but the ball movement, you can already see that Chauncey's trying to push it a little more than he did previously. And it is resulting in in better shots. We shot 42% from three. We shot 38 three attempts, so really only three three to four down from our, our season average last year. So that nonsense about not shooting as many threes, I think that people thought is what Phillips meant when he was saying that is obviously not true. Better yeah. threes, yeah. And there were some people that obviously understood that he's not saying we're not going to shoot threes, but still quite a bit of them. And and especially with <laughs> Nurk went two of four from three. Uh -huh. It's 50% from Nurk from the three-point line. Is this something you think we're going to see more of throughout the year? Is this kind of a preseason yeah. fluke, having some fun? Or do you think Nurk's about to be Jokic-level three-point shooting? Yeah, let's clip this for the socials. I guarantee you Nurkic shoots 50% from three this year. Gu no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I do I do think he's going to shoot somewhere around 30 to 33%. I think he's going to be a little bit below league average. But I actually think that Nurkic shooting and being a hub of offense from the top of the key is going to be more of a thing this year. What Chauncey talked about a lot this this offseason and, and more recently is the guards penetrating and kicking out to shooters. So what you should see a lot more of is instead of Dame going to the cup and trying to draw a foul, he draws the defense sucks him in and then kicks it out to an open shooter so i think that you will see nurk not clogging the paint as much he'll get his touches where it's designed for him to be back to the basket or for him to go to work and maybe nurkic facilitates offense from his own hub whether it be on the elbow or wherever it is but i do think that you're going to see more of dame driving kicking and guys like covington are going to get a lot more open shots you're going to see norman powell shooting a lot of corner threes this year which is something that i do think that this offense lacked a little bit last year with stats you think so? See, I, I disagree. I don't feel that was an issue last year. I thought that was actually how Dame averaged seven assists a game yeah. was because he, he still, you know, drove in and kicked out. Powell still had plenty of corner threes. He missed a lot of them, especially in the playoffs, which is kind of a bummer. But I, I, I feel like they still did a lot of that. To me, the interesting thing is, is if Nurk's taking more threes, which I don't know, how, again, how realistic this is going to be throughout the season, but if he's going to be out there doing that, I'm curious how it's going to affect the pick and roll because it's kind of the biggest thing is when he screens, he's got to cut to the basket. And if he's going to play more on the top of the key there at the top of the free throw line where he's going to be kind of directing the offense in there and passing yeah. more out of that spot and getting more post-ups, I'm curious to see if he's going to really be out on the perimeter shooting that many threes and if that's really the best use of a guy of his size yeah. offensively. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it more often than not. Mm -hmm. um, as far as him getting the ball in the key and posting up more, I don't know if I'm okay with Nurk shooting more threes. I, he's, he's not going to hit threes at that kind of clip. I think even 33% is a little generous. I, it might I, be. I mean, he, he definitely can hit a jump shot. Like, don't get me wrong. He, he yeah. has the capabilities to hit those mid-range shots. Um, and he can definitely – we've seen him hit threes. But I don't want it to become a thing where – He's trying to incorporate that as a, a normal part of his game. He's not Jokic. He's not Anthony yeah. Davis. He's not yeah. all these other bigs that can shoot threes. I'm sorry. He's just not – that's not his play style. Um, mm -hmm. His play style is definitely going to be more post-up. I, I do want to see him slow down. I want him to see him concentrate and really kind of work guys down low and get better looks. Yeah. And I think by him becoming a passing threat, he'll be able to draw guys up and really kind of start to, to utilize more of his strengths. But threes is one of those things that I <laughs> – Ironically, just I, I'm sorry, but when Chauncey comes out and says we're not just going to jack up a bunch of threes, and then you have your center taking four attempts in 20 minutes in the game, I, I, I just I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. Yeah. I do like that he was still involved a lot more in the passing game. He did get four assists again in limited playing time. He actually led the team in assists. Well, he led the starters in assists. Correct myself, which is going to be the big signal of the stuff that we've been hearing about with Chauncey and how he's going to affect the offense is you're going to see the big have the ball in his hands more and, and operate the offense a little more than Dame just walking up and kind of dissecting. Right. So that was interesting to see. Dame looked good. He had five threes. Um, he did normal Dame stuff. Everybody else kind of looked mediocre. They didn't look bad. They didn't look good. It's preseason. Nobody played, you know, in the twenties really. So yeah, as far as minutes played and, I still think we're going to look all right. I saw a lot of the same consistencies, the issues on defense that I've continued to see because yep. 
<laughs> I mean, it's going to take time, but I just, I'm sorry. Like, the guards just can't defend. I saw a lot more Nurk up there, yeah. which is fine. But yeah. uh, some of the highlights that I did get to see, a lot of what Golden State was doing well is as soon as Nurk gets involved up top, they're just throwing down low and there's nobody there to stop a guy. They're cutting them, making a pass. Yeah. And that's going to be a problem if, if you don't yeah. – well, I understand people knock stops with the drop centered scheme, but yeah. when your guards can't defend, you have nobody down low to defend if he's up there on the key like that in the perimeter – I don't know. That's one of the things I noticed and I'm a little worried about. Have so been. his so the scheme and what the, the big difference was when Dame or CJ were defending a point of attack, like let's say, for example, the pick and roll, when they were on the primary defender, Nurkic, instead of dropping all the way back to the basket, was actually moving up and cutting off that person sure. at the screen point. But like you said, if he if that person, that offensive player gets around Nurkic, there it's a free run at the basket. So I mean, that's gonna be a big challenge because not only is that a schematic change, but now we have defensive co where like we have to be linked up together and everybody has to be communicating. And that's not something the Blazers have ever been good at on defense. So I think what you're alluding to is like, can, is this going to get better throughout the year? Or at some point are they just going to bail on that and just go back to their old habits? We will see that is, that's going to be a yeah. huge and thing for defense. And it's one preseason game, so I'm yeah. not jumping to any kind of conclusions, and nobody really no. should. People are going to overreact every single game, especially to yes. start the season because it's a new coach and all this, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be right. overblown one way or the other. Of course it is. Um, I really don't want to fall into that trap, but those are just little things. I'm trying to watch for things I've noticed. I did notice mm -hmm. Nurk up top more, and that led to some easy, easy just at the basket attempts for Golden State, which really kind of helped them put the game away on top of Curry's. We don't have very many good help defenders. Like, I mean, if you think about it, like, so Rocco can kind of roam around and be a help defender. But if Nurkic is getting blown by, the other thing is, and this is something that Chauncey talked about too, Nurkic has to be in such good physical shape in order to be able to, to hedge and then cut back to the basket. He has to be able to guard point guards and shooting guards and those little quick agile guys and run with them and not just be a big body banging down low. That's going to yeah. be hard. And I don't know that Nurkic has ever been in good enough shape to play that system. So again, we'll, I mean, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. We're just, we're just going to have to see, but I do think he can make the adjustments and I do think he wants to be the aggressive defender. Yeah. And we'll talk more about this next week when we do our, our preseason more no, breakdown. that's the wrong. That's the wrong term. The season preview. <laughs> I mean, technically, we're doing it pre the season, but yeah, pre the good. season, pre the season preview. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it. So, but I, I mean, that's some of the things I noticed. Yeah. I, I do like again. I like seeing Amp being more involved as an, sure. a distributor and seeing him be successful. I mean, at least as far as assist numbers go, Dame's doing Dame stuff. CJ's driving a bit more. Um, I saw him make a couple nice plays after he kicked in and was able to kick back out yeah. cj driving more is going to be a thing i'm really going to look for this year so happy to see that right um, that's about it I and mean, that's really all i noticed I, as far as the i do want to ask you a little bit about what you thought about some of the guys trying to make that that last roster spot or two i noticed smith played a lot of minutes chris played a mm -hmm. decent amount i mean a lot of minutes but for those yeah. guys a decent amount of minutes and then they seem to really use uh what's his face as well um Oh golly, it's gonna bug me now. Not, Pat, not Patrick Patterson. Not Patrick Patterson. Um, You're talking about uh, Kelgen Blevins? No, not Blevins. Chris. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of Macklemore, but no, he's obviously gonna make the roster. He's already yeah. on the team. So, so I did see Dennis Smith came in, got ten yeah. points off the bench. Yeah. Um, he was didn't do a lot. He still played 14 minutes. Went three of seven. Didn't do too much as far as assists goes. We did have three assists, two yeah. rebounds. So he did kind of the things that we expect him to do. With Anthony playing point guard, do you think there is a legitimate shot he makes the team as like an off-ball shooting guard of some sorts? I don't think so. I mean, this team already has plenty of shooting. We already have plenty of everything that – I think Anthony Simons just has to be that player. Now, when you're talking about Nasir Little and someone who can do more of that skill set, I think you're going to see either – I think you're going to see a lot of – um, if I had to guess, Marquise Chris is probably the most likely to make this team because of the front court issues with durability. And I, I don't I don't know other than that. I'd like to sit here and pretend like, oh, yeah, I definitely know that Dennis Smith Jr. is going to make the team, but I don't. And Quinn Cook, I don't know if Quinn Cook's going to get I, – I have no idea what they're planning to do with these guys. Um, I just know that Neil and, and Chauncey have talked about bringing these guys in and seeing what they can do. So I, I guess we'll see. I'm curious. I'm curious to see who makes that roster, though. 
Yeah, because Quinn Cook didn't even play coach's decision. He just never yeah. made it into the game. So, yeah. And that was the same with Patrick Patterson, never made it yeah. into the game. So Chris and Smith, that are the four that we brought in for the camp spots, really only two that did anything meaningful. Smith looked the best. I would say that he beat yeah. out Chris. Chris went one of three in 13 minutes. Got you. Two rebounds, didn't score. Um, I'm sorry, did score. He scored the – he actually – Got a shot and then hit a free throw, so he got three points. Okay. But I, I am kind of curious know. if next game they play more Cook and Patterson and they're really testing yeah. this out. But so far, Smith is the leader statistically and playing time wise mm-hmm. off the out of the four guys. So that's going to be I one think, thing we want to watch and we'll touch on it again next week as well. Well, and if you look at the pedigree too, so I mean, Quinn Cook and Patterson are two guys who kind of bounced around a little bit. They're sort of veterans. But if you look at Dennis Smith Jr. and Marquise Chris, where they were drafted, they were lottery picks. So I could see us going with talent over um glue guys hustle guys so we'll we'll see where that shakes out what else happened this week anything else rattle your cage oh so you know how i love the topic of uh of the blazer trade rumors revolving ben, ben simmons it's the best. About this guy enough this year he's he's i don't know man he's on my tv and my my phone more than uh more than the Sick tiktoks and all this stuff like he's more popular on the internet than anything else in my world so we uh we actually got an offer, which is interesting by itself. I mean, that's important by itself because that means right. communications were at least open and probably still technically are open. Right. Um, but we did get an offer. Player for player was the main the main draw here. It was CJ McCollum for Ben Simmons. So yep. a few things to, to break down from that. Um, but it also included three Blazers first round picks and then three pick swaps. So we would have kept the other three picks, but we would have swapped with Philly Yeah. Um, to be depending on the positioning there. So – Sure. That's a lot. We said no. Why do you think we said no? Do you think just, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Why yeah. they, they so, rejected the trade? Look, we've talked about this before, but Ben Simmons value goes down every single day. So why would you trade CJ plus three picks plus three pick swaps <laughs> where if they're, they're better than you or they're worse than you? It's just, it's crazy to me. I would never swap those picks. I wouldn't do CJ and the swaps, let alone CJ and the picks and swaps. So, I, I don't get it. I do think that we are okay. So right now they are the Kings are engaged with five teams on the Ben Simmons front. I think that the Kings, us, and a few other teams have been rumored. Like I think you know, Minnesota is in there. Minnesota keeps getting brought up. Right. So these four or five yeah. teams just keep First. sort of getting. In my opinion, they're just greasing the wheels. They're just trying to keep the momentum going. They're just trying to keep those rumors out there because they want these teams talking. I don't think Portland would swap CJ for Ben unless it's either straight up or there's kind of a kicker or a sweetener in there. They're certainly not going to include multiple first round picks in a kickback. That's crazy. And Maury's just trying to ask for the most he can as the value continues to drop. So I think that's crazy. I would do, I would do it straight up, but I wouldn't do it with anything else attached because I don't understand why the Blazers would want to put picks into that deal. That doesn't make any sense to me. I think CJ is a better player for them. And Ben doesn't, isn't reporting to camp dude. He just sold his apartment or whatever. Yeah, he's, out. he's out, man. He's not coming back. So it's a depreciating asset. You don't need to pay more for him. Um, we'll see what happens with the negotiation, but I, I think it's BS all of it. I'm still cool with CJ and one, maybe two picks. Okay. Um, and the only reason I say that is because it's because yeah. of their contracts. Sure. Because an age, you know, assuming that you keep, assuming that you keep Dame around and things work out in that trade, and Simmons comes here and has a completely different mindset and isn't in, mm-hmm. isn't in an egotistical, just little piece of crap who's got all the drama causing genes of any other player in his position that's top pick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Assuming he comes in, he's a whole different guy, gets into our culture. Dame and Billups just completely turn him around attitude wise. All right, you have a young piece, right? He's not yeah. old. Now you have him and Dame locked up for another four years, you know, right. around there. And then, to me, you're not going to need those picks. I mean, the best you get out of those picks is you're you're, you're in the high 20s again. You're looking at Anthony Simons and Nasir Littles and these project players. And maybe you get lucky with uh, a guy who falls you that you're really excited for or an injury in college. That, like you, know, you get the Michael Porter in the 20s. But I just don't see this team – I mean – I think Ben Simmons is a better fit than CJ. We've talked about it. I like CJ. I think you lose a little bit offensively, but the playmaking ability and, of course, the defense can really turn games for you in certain situations. So Simmons coming in for that, great. Three picks is a lot, and then you want to start throwing in swaps as well. Now, 
The swaps yeah. don't make a difference to me because if it is just Philly and Portland involved in that, then you're again you're looking at high twenties, right? Philly's right. probably going to still be fine. They have Embiid. You yeah. know, CJ is going to give them more playmaking. Ben Simmons yeah. arguably is probably the better player, so Philly does lose that. But CJ fits better and can still go in there and get twenty plus points with them. Get six, seven assists, running point yeah. guard for them. So really, they're going to probably still be a perennial playoff team. They're going to be outside the lottery, and they're probably going to be a second round team. Most there years, you're looking at high 20s again. Um, right. So that's kind of where the picks don't mm-hmm. make as big of a difference. But that, let's say you do have some injuries come up, or let's say Ben Simmons has an attitude issue and he wants out in a year or two. He's just is like, I didn't want to come here. I tried. You guys suck. Yeah. I'm out. So now you lost those picks. You had the pick swaps don't really make a difference, but the picks you lose. And now you're starting to hurt. If Dame decides he wants out, you lost some of your future building assets. If you do become a team that's down in the lottery, now you don't have your lottery picks and Philly just continues to get better. So that's the that's the concern. Yeah. And that's to me why you don't make that particular move. One to two picks. And TJ, just straight up like that, yeah, I think you look to do that. You maybe draw a player back or a pick back from Philly, a second rounder or something like that to kind of grease those wheels and the spinning a little faster. But – I just don't think that's the reason we turned it down. I mean, I know it's a lot to ask for, but I really think that Neil, especially at this point in the season, is, is all on board with CJ. I don't yeah. think he wants Ben Simmons. I think that's why we said no. I, I don't think the picks made that big of a difference in the mind of Neil because you see like guys like Harden. If you're going to go get a guy that you think Ben Simmons is going to be a superstar in this league, you trade your picks for him. So <laughs> Somebody yeah. scored a question on the back end. Huh? Char- um, that Chargers game is out of control today. My wife's a Chargers fan. It's, it's out of control. Um, two forty one or something like that right now. I know I'm missing the end of your Raiders game too. My my Packers had quite oh, the quite oh. the debacle of a game. If anybody watches the NFL, I know CJ was all over it on Twitter with my Packers. Yeah. He had the the betting side of it, needed to win the two point five spread, so he was all for the field goal. Um, Mason, Mason, Mason. Yeah, I don't know. Guy misses two field goals the last two seasons and then misses three. And anyway, um, <laughs> you can just hear her screaming and, and enjoying herself in the background. I don't even know if yeah. people have probably heard that on the on the pod, but good for, good for Rana's chargers. I have to catch up, but that's my thing on Simmons, man. That's uh, I just think Neil, and that worries me a little bit too, mm-hmm. is this Neil's a little too into CJ. Cause if a guy like that comes up and they offered us a deal for CJ and you say, no, granted, there's a lot of assets that were included in that. I get it, but it makes me worry that he's not willing to move CJ at all. And if a player like that comes up and you say no down the road, you are starting to kind of worry yeah, me. It's risky. Well, it's super risky, right? I mean, you know this team is going to compete for a second round or more. You you don't know what their ceiling is quite yet under Chauncey, so why would you trade that for Ben Simmons, who's been nothing but kind of cancerous in the playoffs? He's killed the Sixers a couple times now. He doesn't have a lot of offense in the playoffs that he can provide when things break down. And as good of a fit as he is with Dame, it doesn't make sense to give up extra compensation when potentially you could have a Dame situation on your own hands where you want those yeah. first round picks over the next three or four years to try to either build around Dame or build after Dame. So there's all these different avenues where Ben Simmons makes sense, but he doesn't make sense until you know 100% that Dame is like committed to Portland long term still, which you don't because he's he's had the roughest offseason, I think, in his history or his career. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. I just hold on to the compensation and wait for Ben Simmons' price to get lower and lower. I mean, going it's, it's going to keep going down. Just wait it out. And Neil knows that. And you can rumor him in these trades all you want with Shams and Woj. But at the end of the day, Neil is going to not accept anything. And, and he and CJ and Dame will have a tight relationship to where they're going to talk it out and say, yeah, we're talking. But, I mean, it's not a thing and it's not concrete. So he can he can smooth those waters a little bit with CJ. Right, and especially this close to the season. I think that's the other thing. I don't think anybody's going to make a move for Ben Simmons unless you really don't expect yourself to be a contender. No contender, in my opinion, is going to make a move right now. Like, I can see Minnesota going out there because even though they got talent, they just haven't really been a contender. So, sure, you maybe make a move now and and hope to escalate yourself up. The Kings, same thing. But, like, the Spurs, we have heard. I don't think the Spurs really make a move. They're always in the bubble of playoffs. Granted, they don't have DeRozan now, but there's – I just think you see more of the stuff pop up come trade deadline. I think that's really when they're going to push it. I think they're going to spend their time in Philly trying to convince him to come back. Doc's trying to reach out to him. They're going to try to get him to play yeah. because he is technically losing all this money. Yep. But I, I just don't see a move coming, at least not with a team like Portland no. anytime soon. I think we're ready to start the season. We've been prepping and practicing with the roster we have. We're, we're coming up to just over a week. 
I don't really see well, a move being the, made at this of point. Of the five teams that were that are rumored, you know, to acquire Ben Simmons, we are probably the best team. So why would you shake it up and be willing to trade one of your best players? I mean, yeah, Minnesota can trade for Ben Simmons all they want. What's the risk? They're, they're not going to lose anything. The Kings have, have been terrible for 20 years now. It's not really <laughs> – so, you know what I mean? Like it's not really yeah. a big deal to them. But to us – we are already a contending playoff team. We have made the playoffs for 10 years in a row. So why would we bother to bring in Simmons and risk screwing up our culture and our locker room and what we've built? Um, so I just, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I am pretty good with talking about Simmons unless there's more you want to attack on this. No, we've talked about Simmons for the last three months and I'm, I'm kind of over it, but it was interesting to see an official trade come out. Yeah. Well, okay. We don't know how official it was, but Sure. There were the, the obviously the reports that came out from reliable sources that we did indeed turn down that trade. So that was a that's big crazy. deal. That's um, and that's really all I have to say on the Ben Simmons. So I'm sure next week we do this every week. I swear to God, we have some Ben Simmons needs to talk about. I'm done with yeah. this guy, but he keeps popping up. He just won't go He's away. Not done with us. And he's next thing. <laughs> Blazers turned down trade for two first round picks and three swaps. And then the week after that, it'll right. be one pick. I mean, it just won't stop. Yeah. That's yeah, how it'll work. No, nope. that's, that's exactly that's all after that. Um, okay. so that kind of leads me into. Well, you know what? I'm ready to do. I'm ready to do our segment. I think this is everybody's favorite segment. No. This is obviously the other big piece of news that came up. So, and there, I might be missing players. I'm gonna be honest with you, but these are the three yeah. prominent yeah. players that I'm aware of for our edition of Blazing New Trails X Players this week of the week. Players. Yeah, most of them. They played with us, in, especially in the '90s. Sebastian yeah. Telfair, Darius Miles, and Ruben Patterson. Um, those three guys used to play for the Blazers back in the day in the 90s. Look at you got all of them pulled up. Is that look at that? I have to share them on multiple screens, but yeah, oh, I'm happy okay. To well, so one at a time works. That's, that's there fine. Is. There's there's one at a time works. Um, so these three guys were involved with the the NBA's health insurance policy fraud scam. Oh, 18 players total. Um yeah, so three former Blazers were in here. Look at them all popping up there. So Back there's in the Sebastian Telfair. Oh, Still thought that draft pick was sort of wasted, but whatever. That's fine. That's, so That's they're fine. there. Uh, so, yeah, the, the overall number, I believe, was just under $4 million. It was like 3.6 or 3.7 mil. I've heard different numbers, but I'm pretty sure. That's Ruben Patterson That's the face he's making right now. That's, uh, that's the That's the exact face that he is making right now because I'm not really sure what the punishment for this is. Um, but it's, it's it's not going to be good. I would imagine they probably get it's fined. Not, they probably have to pay the money back, and then yeah. I can see some white collar, white collar crime and some prison yeah. time potentially. Um, but maybe that's wondering that hasn't heard about this or was curious about what it was. Maybe they just saw a flash or go by on the news article. Essentially, they were f- submitting false claims for dental mm-hmm. and health and getting reimbursement checks and taking the reimbursement checks and walking off and having a good time. So all 30 teams pay out into these funds that the NBA helps these retired players with, with health. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of messed up. I mean, you hear stories about some of these guys that have come out, they can't get the help or they've had issues dealing with insurance. And then you have a group of 18 guys like this come out and then scam the system by submitting false claims. When we probably don't need it, if we're being honest with you, it's it's, it's sad to see. Yeah. I mean, the players' union is going to have to address this. The NBA is going to have to address this once the legal proceedings kind of come out. Portland, the current team, has also been slightly affected by this. Mm-hmm. Mil- Palacio. Palacio. Just- Palacio? I've said it five different times. <laughs> <laughs> so Palacio is what I'm sticking with. So he was placed on administrative leave in Portland. Uh, he's an yeah. assistant coach. Ironically, one of the assistant coaches I don't even think we talked about in the offseason as a hiring, but he's there. Uh, he's not there, I should say. Yeah. You think he affects anything? I mean, does he? I know that him as a coach probably doesn't overall affect the team one way yeah. or the other as far as performance, but knowing that you had a coach that was involved in something like that and some guys that played decent careers in Portland were involved in that. I mean, how do you think this makes the team feel? Yeah. If you're so, if you're reaching, like I heard, saw a couple of people on Blazers Twitter basically saying, like, "Oh, I hope the jail Blazers don't come back. This isn't good. It's been tumultuous and all." It's like, I think that's a bit of a reach. I mean, this is sort of a, a to me, not a non-issue, but it's not a big deal. 
Um, I do think that committing fraud is obviously a big deal. And I think that they did something wrong. and It was incorrect, but they placed the guy on administrative leave and it's not Chauncey's fault. I don't think they no. could have possibly known about this through a background check. There's no, no one knew about this until the, the wall street journal dropped the report. So it's not like Chauncey hired some scumbag that he knew what his background was. We, they didn't, he didn't know. So I think, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. It's kind of a non-issue to me. I hope they pay their fines and learn from the issue and nobody else commits that same fraud but it's it is a little disappointing to see it's like man did you guys really need that money that bad <laughs> whatever <laughs> they probably thought they could use it that way or something i don't know who knows but um i don't think he comes back i mean he's on leave right now the blazes won't comment any further nah. and i don't blame him until the legal stuff gets done yeah. doing its process obviously obviously they did it i mean i wouldn't think you would go through these lengths to, to determine and all these reports come out it's public knowledge at this point that they did it so it's really just going to determine what their punishments are going to be i imagine that you know palacio is not going to be allowed back um, so that's a, that's an assistant coach that we're down now so they'll probably end up hiring somebody else i'm sure yep. and we'll talk about that but yeah man it's it's just too bad it's too bad that it you're is. working with a guy every day um you, you you work your your heart off to get to this position as a player you work with these coaches in practice now you find out that one of them was involved in something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad to hear it. Um, but that's kind of, I guess it was the blazing new trails and the other topic as far as the, the frog yeah. goes. Or one of our coaches were involved in two that. Two for one. So, yeah, yeah two for one. Um, so that's the only real news I, I have this week. I mean, I didn't really hear anything else come out that's really talk-worthy um, as far as our recap goes. Do you have anything else you want to add before I give you my last no. little bit here? No, I. You said you had a surprise segment for me. I do. Well, it's not a surprise segment. It's one of yeah. it's. It's an up and coming segment. Up and um, coming. Yeah, it's the Anthony Simons of segments. <laughs> um, it's, so, so, so I told people we'd be working on these more often than we have slower pods, and and this week is no exception. Yeah. So the what if we need to get like a cool thing that comes. I need. We need to work on the our the special effects for blazing new trails and and right. what if when we have these i'm gonna we're gonna deal with that but anyway right now no no fun intro but what if uh as you people know the marvel series just wrapped up i was a fan of it personally it was pretty mm -hmm. cool and uh, we did one before and it was what if greg odin didn't hurt his leg and we talked yeah. about it you you get to answer the story so this time my what if for you what if Wesley Matthews didn't hurt himself what if he didn't get injured what if the Achilles wasn't a thing that ever happened um, remember that year we would have CJ McCollum and uh, Aaron Aflalo was the big trade we made that year coming off of the right. bench. We ended up beating the Clippers that year in the playoffs. We lost to Memphis and then all heck broke loose when yeah. everybody decided that they were going to go other ways and let LaMarcus go. We didn't let LaMarcus go, but yeah. the team obviously did a complete 360 at that point. If Wesley, if, if Wesley Matthews, if Wesley <laughs> Matthews stays yeah. healthy on that team with Dame, him, Batum, Aldridge, and I think mean, it was Robin Lopez at the time. If they stay healthy, what do you think that team could have done? You think the team would have yeah. stayed together? What do you think happens? Yeah, that's a good what if. So I I remember when West tore his Achilles, there was people didn't come back from that injury back then. I mean, it was yeah. just not a thing. That was a career ending. Guys couldn't really rehab. We've gone we've come a long way since then. And a lot of players have come back. Durant and cousins came back after torn Achilles, but except you know, Clay Thompson. Yeah, but the biggest thing, so to me, the what if is, so I do think that if he doesn't get hurt, we probably still lose in that playoffs. I think we were a little outmatched in those playoffs. I think Dame was not quite on the level he is now. Once the Marcus has left, he wasn't able to level up and, and really grow his game into the MVP caliber all-star game. But I think what we would have done is I think we would have maxed out Wes in the next year. I think hmm. LaMarcus still would have left. I don't think LaMarcus wanted to stay in Portland no matter what. I think he was feeling overshadowed by Dame, so I think he would have left still. But I think that Wes would have stayed on a max deal. We did not even call him that offseason, which was kind of a big slap in the face to him because yeah. he had given Portland so much as the Iron Man. Um, but I, I think that we would have maxed him out. I think he probably would have got like four years, 80 million, because we went on a crazy spending spree that offseason once the yeah. Marcus left. And I think he would have got the Evan Turner contract. As far as what happens, I don't think CJ becomes CJ, right? Like he becomes this. Right. That's man. the flip side of this. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I think that you actually have probably a lower trajectory. You have a better defensive team, but you have a lot less of an offensive punch because CJ never becomes this like 25 point per game scorer because he doesn't get enough minutes to develop that game the way that 
he he was. So that's my what that's what I think would happen. Do you think that that would have kept Lamarcus in town, or was it a foregone conclusion? No, I don't think Lamarcus was staying. Regardless, right. I agree with you there because I think I think CJ had enough promise. He did really good that playoffs to where you can already kind of look at your your guy being better. <sighs> I mean. <laughs> I, I think Lamarcus leaves. I agree with you. I think Wesley gets the twenty million easy. I mean, you're not giving that money to Evan Turner or Alan Crab, right? If you know for a fact that you have Wesley Matthews still. That would have been better. Mm-hmm. I also think right. Batum would stay yep. um, because even though Lamarcus is gone, I think Batum at that time again would have earned the same money that you would have given out to Crab or to Evan they Turner. Remember, those guys got max contracts, yeah. and I think Batum would have gotten that. So I think you would have Dame, Wes, Batum. You would have had to figure out power forward, which would have been kind of an interesting dilemma that the yes. team would have faced. Right. Um, but, you know, that that's the only thing that would really would have changed. You would have probably still signed Myers Leonard and kept him in town. I think yeah. you would have still made some of the other roster moves that they made. Mo but, Hart man, Hart you're right. That's the, not be involved. that's the big alternate universe, though, is, is the no CJ. Now, let's say CJ plays good enough on your bench – you got to think that with Wesley on a max, he would have probably traded CJ away at some point, two, three years into him. Yes. I mean, he would have been the Anthony Simons, right? That would have been yeah. his role, that second yep. guard off the bench, Gary coming Jr. in, getting 15 a game, 10 a game, whatever. He yep. obviously wasn't probably – career average is 20, and he plays 30-plus minutes a game. So you would have think he'd probably only be around 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. He probably would have sliced up second – Second team units for sure. Most of you don't know how you develop. You don't right. know the most experience important. and playing with Dame and and that yeah. scheme. So how yeah, they were, I, I agree with I you. Think, I think we would have been better against Memphis. I think the yes. heart of that team kind of went down. A follow never really belonged here. He never he didn't play good stepping up for Wesley at the time. Remember CJ still came off the bench in that that series. Killed us, but. I don't think we, I mean, Western Conference Finals, I mean, I don't think you were doing anything there anyway. It was probably going to be, I think, I don't even remember who won. I'm pretty sure Golden State won that year anyway. That was, I want to say that was their first win mm-hmm. of the three because um, we got swept by them the next year in the first year of the revamp team. So, yep. yeah, interesting to say. I mean, I would have thought that having his defense and three point shooting and the hustle that he gave that team, and LaMarcus was always kind of considered soft. Sorry, LaMarcus, but you were. He was. Jane was still. You know, Raw CJ was a rookie, so I really think that he was the the oomph and the energy of that team, the Gary Trent Jr. of that team. So I would like I would like to think that they would have done better in playoffs, but they really the alternate universe of that is the lack of CJ, which would have been because I agree with you, but they would have re-signed Wes. Um, so the lack of CJ because I think he still got a max contract. Actually, I think Dallas ended up giving him twenty mil. So C, or uh, so Wes still got a max contract with Dallas right after that. They actually paid him the money. And he never, like you said, he never came back and he never recovered from that. So, yep. Uh, we'll see. I mean, the, the, uh, you brought up an interesting point of like, what would we have done at power forward because Lamarcus left? I think it would have been interesting to see which way they would have attacked it. But it's a what if would. and it's gone. So it is what it probably is. Still right? Faru- or Al Farik, right? I mean, we probably still bring Aminu in. That was the answer at power forward after everybody left anyway. So he was still relatively cheap. Neil obviously still liked him, so I could still see him coming back and playing power. I don't think that would have changed in that universe, yeah. but that's it. No, that's the, the segment. That's really all I have this week. We want to make uh, the official announcement. We can let people know now because he's he's definitely signed on, but we will have Dave Deckard from Blazers Edge on the pod next week with us. On the 17th, we're going to record, so we'll have it out Monday like normal to get ready to kick off the season. So we're going to have his – Amazing basketball mind when it comes to the Blazers. If you guys haven't listened to some of the stuff that he does, David Nia podcast, etc., we'll give him a chance to obviously talk about himself. But you know, most people know who he is, what he's done with Blazers Edge, and, and how prominent he is. So it'd be really cool to have his mind here to talk about the team with us. Um, so we'll have that set up for you, and then we're going to be recording that on the seventeenth. So keep continue to subscribe. Again, we're yes. we're going up slowly, but once we hit the five hundred mark, if we ever get to that point. We are going to give away the free pair of tickets. We're still planning on giving away a free pair of tickets to the Boston game. There'll be other small prizes that we're going to do here and there. So, you know, we want to continue to to engage with you guys. We appreciate all the support so far. There's a button right on my screen. It's right there. Yeah, so I can't. Subscribe to that. Uh, for the people who listen on the audio only version, yeah. uh, continue to follow us on things like Twitter if you can. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can, even if you don't have a chance to listen to us live like this. So you guys can be involved as well because we want to make sure that everybody in every avenue, we'll do different contests for every avenue as well, but we know we have plenty of audio listeners on, that do the Apple and Google and all those different podcast sites, Spotify, et cetera. So we'll yeah. make sure that you guys are included. 
Um, but that's it, man. That's all I really have this week, and we're excited. Next week will be the preview. We probably won't spend too much more time on the preseason stuff because, quite frankly, we just won't have scheduling time with the season getting ready to start. Yeah. So we're just going to focus on that. Uh, maybe dip into it a little bit. We'll use the preseason as some kind of a gauge to see where Chauncey's schemes go and, and some of that fun stuff when we talk with David. But that's all I have, man. That's it. And just like that, hit the sub. Other than that, we out. We out. Peace.